afternoon. Before I begin, I'd like to thank you for holding this hearing and uh, allowing me the opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Washburn. I'm the Executive Director for Combat Arts San Diego. Combat Arts is a nonprofit uh, art organization that serves post 9 11 combat veterans uh, in treatment for post traumatic stress disorder and TBI. Uh, in addition, we serve teens incarcerated in Juvenile Hall. Um, our programming includes art classes, art shows, uh, mentoring, public art opportunities, and cultural tours. Uh, we serve around 100 veterans a year and over uh, close to 1,000 uh, juveniles. My background is I'm a visual artist and art teacher who's been working in San Diego communities, teaching art and facilitating public art projects with underserved communities for over 15 years. Specifically, I've been working with wounded war veterans for 11 years. At first glance, art may not seem like a likely companion to a soldier, but I have more st stories than I have time to tell today about Big Tough Marines finding a lot of relief from making art, and making art help them to regain a sense of purpose after the intensity of war. One example is Marine Sergeant Aaron Rare, who served two combat tours in Iraq as a turret gunner. Aaron's PTSD symb symptoms started during his second deployment, where he began having intense nightmares that led to chronic insomnia. By the time Aaron got home from his second deployment, he was not only not sleeping, but also began to isolate to avoid anxious situations that included things like going to the grocery store, driving, being in public areas. And even though he was home and out of harm's way, he was unable to turn off the hypervigilance that he had developed while he was on his combat patrols and missions in Iraq. Interacting with his wife and family without severe anxiety and agitation became difficult and he began drinking heavily. Thankfully, he sought out treatment in a Navy-sponsored PTSD clinic, which is when he ended up in one of our art classes. And that's his artwork that he did uh, in our class, which is interesting that you guys chose that. Um, art making became a way for him to express his feelings and communicate when words failed him. In addition, the act of making art slowed his mind down and provided him with some relief that made the re other realities of his life more manageable. Today, Aaron works with combat arts in the same clinic he was treated in, helping other service members to use art to heal and connect. And in addition, he's remarried and is a father for the second time. The anecdotal evidence of art helping veterans with PTSD tells the story of the individual veterans with, that we work with and the neuroscientific research based on brain plasticity that is being published shows numerical data that supports the use of art in strengthening cognition. New advances in brain imaging have allowed scientists to view brain activity during art making. For example, art lights up a pleasure center in the, in the brain that releases dopamine. That good feeling, the dopamine, encourages an individual to stay in the present moment without regretting the, regretting the past or fearing the future. This mindfulness state helps to diminish negative thought loops, making room for more cognitive, healthy cognitive functioning that is not wholly reliant on drugs. The studies are very useful in supporting our goal of less drug prescriptions and more alternative therapies, like art, being prescribed to veterans. Art is a medicine that can be independently realized by a veteran to help them through moments of anxiety and stress. In addition, the community-based engagement that art programs like Combat Arts provides to the military and civilian communities promotes not only awareness, but also opportunities for the two groups to connect. The art projects also require a certain amount of self-determination on the part of the veteran that otherwise doesn't necessarily materialize when drugs and insufficient talk therapy are the only sources of medicine available. The veteran has a role to play in society even when they have finished their tours of duty. It would benefit everyone involved if we had higher expectations of veterans and provided access to opportunities as our thanks for their service. Community engagement programs are also very economically friendly and do not have long wait times. <laughs> Instead of overwhelmed government agencies being taxed with helping veterans find alternative methods for healing, civilian community providers with proven track records serving veterans can be contracted by local and state agencies to fill holistic prescriptions that the health provider and veteran agree on. This model of care arts on prescription will lessen the load of veteran care for the state and connect community providers with veterans in need of their services. 
In order for this model to work, however, community partners cannot be expected to volunteer these services or raise all of the needed funding. A focus on developing creative avenues to pay for community-based alternative needs to be part of this conversation, whether it's corporate sponsors who get tax incentives, the reallocation of existing funds, or other financial solutions. Moving forward, the need for alternative care has been established and is evidenced by massive amounts of opiate addictions and suicides among veterans. Community arts providers can be part of the solution. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak today.